All right, so this is the Understand Pharmacodynamics Better series. And the categories are potent potables. And the scores in this game are not actually the scores, but the milligram equivalents of the first generation antipsychotics. And the reason why we need to use milligram equivalents for these drugs is because they have different potency. And I feel like first generation antipsychotics have a particular emphasis on potency, since we kind of divide them into high potency, first gen, and low potency. But of course, potency is a concept that applies to all the drugs that we use. So let's get to it. So there are different formal definitions of potency. One of the more common ones is EC50 which is the drug required to produce 50% of the drug's maximum effect, and it's also called the half maximal effective concentration. But sometimes also ED50 is used, and that would be just the dosage of a drug required to produce 50% of the drug's maximal effect. But I think probably the best definition is just potency is a measure of the necessary amount of drug to produce an effect of a given magnitude. But I think to have a better grasp on what potency actually is and how it differs from efficacy, it's best to make a visual of what's actually going on. So first I'm going to draw a super simplified version of two perfectly equal neurons. The exact same neurons, they're in the exact same conditions, they have the same number of the same receptors. And I'm going to inject one drug on the left and one drug on the right. And both these drugs are full agonists, which means they have full efficacy of the system. And as for the amount that I'm giving, for both the drugs, I'm giving the drugs at their half maximal effective concentration, which is the EC50 that I just talked about. So before I start talking about these different drugs, I want you to take a second and think to yourself, which of these two drugs has the higher potency and why? So the answer is the drug on the left is higher potency. And we can see that both these drugs hit the exact same number of receptors. But the drug on the right has a lower potency, so it required a much higher dosage or concentration to hit that same number of receptors as the drug on the left. And we can see that because there's more of the drug floating around near the nerve cell. And I want to show this on a dose effect curve. So the drug on the left is going to be the curve with the darker blue, and the drug on the right is going to be the curve with the lighter blue. So it's going to be the same color as the drug. And on the x-axis is dose, and on the y-axis is the effect. And since these drugs are full agonists, we can see that they both have the maximal amount of effect that's possible within the system. And when we look at the effects that our drugs had, we see that the drug on the left occurred at a lower dose because it's more potent. And the drug on the right occurred at a higher dose because it's less potent. So the curve is just shifted to the right. So the important point to take away from this is that both of these drugs had the same effect. They have equal efficacy, but the drug on the left just achieved it at a lower dose, so it's more potent. And a point I want to emphasize is that a lot of times you hear the word potency be used colloquially to mean it's more effective, when in reality it just means that it's occurring at a lower concentration and it says nothing about the efficacy of the drug. So to give you a concrete example, let's compare Thorazine to Haldol. And from the title slide, we saw that two milligrams of Haldol is equal to 100 milligrams of Thorazine. But that doesn't mean that Haldol is more effective. It just means that we use it at a lower dose than we use Thorazine. And lastly, I'm just going to emphasize the difference between potency and efficacy by throwing a high potency partial agonist up onto the dose response curve. And here we can see that the efficacy of this partial agonist is lower than the efficacy of the two drugs on the screen. But we see that the effects occur at a lower dose than our drug on the right, and that's why it's a higher potent drug. And that's why the curve is shifted to the left compared to our drug on the right. So to quickly summarize, potency is the amount of drug required to produce a given effect. So if less concentration is required, it's a more potent drug. And this says nothing about the efficacy of the drug.